This chimpanzee is using a stick to look for a meal inside an insect nest. When Jane Goodall reported this behavior in the 1960s, she overturned the widespread belief that humans alone had the creativity to use tools. It turns out that what sets us apart isn't tool use per se, but the way we copy and modify tools over time. Anthropologists call this cultural ratcheting because ideas that are distributed across a large network of minds can't be lost. Instead, they accumulate and become more complex than any individual could grasp. That's what's uniquely human, or it was. Now, engineers have devised computer programs that can also learn from the past and build on what they've learned. We've entered the age of creative machines. When we look at the innovations that have enabled human expression over the past centuries, they're easy to sort into two broad groups. Production technologies are the tools we can use to make original works. They evolve over generations, but their purpose is the same, to channel creativity from inside us to outside. And distribution technologies are how we share those works with people who can't experience them in person. From the printing press to broadcast radio to the internet's many platforms for self-publishing, these inventions expanded the potential audience until it was effectively global. But en route to that worldwide audience, a transformation occurred, a step on the ratchet toward AI. And that was digitization. Stories once printed on paper migrated to URLs. Songs once stamped into plastic were copied and shared as MP3s. And by the time cameras went into our pockets, only the enthusiasts kept buying film, which many would scan, to post online. Once creative artifacts are digitized, they can be analyzed mathematically by machines designed to learn. But that took a shift in how computer programs work. Until recently, you had to tell them what to do from the top down, a rule to follow for every circumstance they would encounter. Machine learning flipped that process around. Instead of giving them rules, you give them a goal and lots and lots of practice. The program writes its own rules from the bottom up, storing them in a vast mathematical web called a model. In the past five years, machine learning has given us augmented reality filters, new editing tools, and motion capture techniques. It's transformed distribution with personalized recommendations that decide much of what we see and hear online. But AI developers didn't stop there. They kept scraping the internet to make bigger datasets to train bigger models on more powerful computers until those models could be prompted to offer ideas of their own. They can write poems and melodies and code, make images of anything you can think of in any style you can think of. They're moving to video and 3D and VR. It's an incredible pace of change that can leave you wondering, where does human creativity fit in all this? That's a question that painters might have asked in the 1830s, when the rare and exacting skill of creating realistic images was abruptly automated by photography. The new medium was not immediately accepted as an art form by painters, but they soon began to find reference photos quite helpful. And the next generation redefined the goal of painting altogether, sparking the whirlwind of innovation that we call modern art. It's been said that every abundance creates a new scarcity. And when you sit in front of a generative model that's asking for nothing but good ideas, it's your own creativity that feels scarce. Each dot on this map is an image that's been generated with stable diffusion. And they cluster in these congested regions. Robots, celebrities, animals. So many back roads for unique thinkers to travel. Getting there, though, requires some skill. What seems like a heavily automated process can in fact be directed in many ways. Whether you begin with the seed of an idea or a fully formed plan, a growing number of settings and tools let you play more creative ownership of what happens next. And by retraining large models on more curated data, it's already possible to collect as many personalized playgrounds as you have time to think up. 
the output from a generative model isn't the end of the process. In skilled hands, it's just the beginning. For the first time, we have a technology with the attributes of a good collaborator. One that offers useful but unexpected ideas that takes feedback and tries again. Gone are the days when we faced the blank page alone. And in exchange, you and your audience will never really know where you end and the machine begins. I won't lie and say that I know where this is going, but we know that there's no going back.